What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm gonna show you five tips for working with high hydration sourdough. Learning how to properly hydrate your flour is really important and it's gonna unlock so many doors for you. This is gonna change the way you bake, it's gonna give you a little bit more versatility in your baking and if you're chasing that open crumb, it's really gonna help you push the open crumb. Finally, if you're selling your bread and you have a bakery, the water doesn't really cost you anything so if you can add more water to the dough and you're doing volume, guess what, you're gonna make more money. So let's get started and take a look at our tips. The first tip is a two-parter. You need to know your flour and hydration. And the reason I put this in one tip is because your flour is going to dictate what hydration you use. Weaker flours will absorb less water. Softer grains will absorb less water. Spelt, for example, doesn't absorb as much water as a hard red spring wheat. So depending on what type of flour you're using and how it's milled, this is going to change your hydration. By understanding the flour, we can now take a look at our total formula and really understand hydration. If you're using a liquid or stiff starter, that's also going to change your dough's total hydration. When we look at the final dough, we're talking about water as an ingredient. 80%, 85%, but when we look at our total formula, you're gonna need to understand how to calculate that hydration. If you need a little help with Baker's Percentage, you can check out my video on how to calculate Baker's Percentage here. You can also check out my blog, I'll leave a link in the description below, and you can check out the article on how to calculate Baker's Percentage. Tip number two, manage your fermentation. Now, this is really important. If you're working with a wet dough and it's under fermented, it's gonna be super slack. I suggest getting yourself one of these if you don't already have a thermometer, you're gonna use that to manage fermentation. If your dough is cold, put it somewhere warm. If your dough is warm, put it somewhere cold. Stick it in the fridge for half an hour. If you've got a little proofing box like I do, then you can put it in the proofing box. There's gotta be a warm place in your house or alternatively, a cold place. I'm in Ontario, Canada, so my house is typically colder and I'll do things like use warmer water when I mix my dough to have a higher final dough temperature so that I can sort of manage that fermentation. If I notice my dough is cold, I have a proof setting in my oven, I can put it in there as well. Tip number three for working with high hydration sourdough is to add your water in stages. So I'm gonna show you now how I start to do my dough mixes and how I decide the water. We've already talked about the importance of knowing your flour and keep in mind that more whole grains are gonna absorb more water. So if you're making a high whole grain bread, you can probably put more water into it. Today, this is a 20% recipe, a typical high hydration country sourdough. out here is a wet dough scraper to help me mix my flour measured out, my water, and I keep this as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove a little bit of the total water. I print all my recipes out before I make them, and I can look here and quickly do the math. So I'm gonna need about 220 grams to make up 10% of the final dough's hydration. So we're gonna now remove 220. It's a little bit too much. And I like to put this right on top of the mixer. Keep in mind, you can always add more water, but you can't take away. So we want to develop the dough a little bit in the mixing process and add water as the gluten develops. So let's take a look in our mixer. We're gonna add the water first. Then we're gonna add our flour. I've got my backup water on top, remember? We're gonna close the lid and we're just gonna start to mix this. Now I like to keep a little thing of water beside me so that I can scrape down the bowl with a wet dough scraper as necessary. We're gonna decide how much water we can add after. So we let this autolyse, we're gonna let it sit. You can see there's not a whole lot of gluten development here. There's not much going on. Once we come back to the dough, it's gonna have absorbed some of that water and we can start to add the water in the second stage of the mixing. We can always hold some of this back, but we can't take it away. We're gonna get a stronger dough through this type of mixing process. The French call this technique a bassinage where we're adding water, second water during mixing. You'll see a lot of recipes call for second water or second stage water. Essentially, we're doing the same. We're just creating our own second stage. We're gonna mix in our Levin now. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this to get it going. So here's gonna be my bassinage. So I can tell the dough's a little bit stiff. 
Add some water. Water's also gonna help the Levan mix in. Tip number four, working with high hydration sourdough is to fold your dough. Folding the dough is going to build strength in your dough, allowing that period of rest and then a fold, rest, and then a fold is gonna allow you to strengthen the dough through fermentation. You're also developing th strength through the fermentation process. So you're gonna have this really strong dough that when it comes time to shaping, it's gonna hold its shape on the bench. It's gonna give you a great oven spring and a beautiful open crumb. This tip actually comes with a bonus. Now the bonus is, for wet dough, use wet hands. By wetting your hands, you're gonna allow yourself to grab the dough without the dough sticking to your hands. Why don't we take a look at what that looks like and I'll show you right now how I fold my dough. So in this container, I've got about 5.4 kgs of dough and you can see it's beautiful. It's got bubbles on the top. It's relatively flat and now we're gonna fold this and I'm gonna pull it right up to here so you can see how to build that really good strength. So we're gonna wet our hands and then we're gonna give this dough a really good strength building fold. So I'm gonna put my hands in here. I'm gonna get underneath the dough just to make sure it's loose. And when I pull it back, I'm gonna use my sort of hip to make sure the dough bin doesn't slide. We're gonna pick this right up. If your hand can take too long, you can do it again. And I'm just gonna keep picking the dough up and throwing it over itself until I get to the end. I'll pick the whole thing up and place it in. Now you'll notice, well, there's nothing really stuck to my hands. It comes pretty clean because that wet hand lets you handle that wet dough. So our fourth tip of folding the dough is gonna help you develop strength with a bonus tip of using wet hands for wet dough. Tip number five is to cold ferment your dough. After you've done your bulk fermentation, pre-shape, final shape, and you've got your dough in a banatone, something like this or similar, a bowl with a towel, whatever it is you're baking in, Put that dough in the fridge. I like to place my doughs in the fridge for 10 to 15 hours. You can do a little bit more, you could do a little bit less, and depending on what stage your dough was at when it went in the fridge, you can probably bake it straight from the fridge or take it out, give it an hour. My recommendation, make two breads, try it, do a side-by-side, -side, see what works best for your dough. Cold fermentation is gonna give you that great flavor. It's also gonna give you a great, nice, beautiful crust. And finally, and most importantly, it's gonna make your dough easier to handle and score. When you take that bread out of the fridge, you tip it out, you can score it with ease, you can get it in the oven without sort of fumbling that dough around. So tip number five, cold fermentation. Easier handling, better crust, and better flavor. There's my five tips for working with high hydration sourdough. Let me know in the comments what hydration is your favorite to work with and what you think makes the best bread. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, share. It's gonna help me grow, it's gonna help more people find me, and it's gonna help me create more of the content that you love. I hope these tips helped you out. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you all the best success in your baking.